What's going on guys? Welcome back to our survival let's play. So guys, did you ever just have a day where you just want to play Minecraft? Like, do you just have all these ideas floating around your head and like you just, you just have to play? And that's one of those days and now I know you guys were like expecting a Forever Bedrock episode. But that episode's kind of taken a while. Plus, uh, with the hurricane, I actually need to do some stuff with Juggerite. And, of course, you know, he was caught in the path of that. He's okay. So, you know, all good there. But once he gets back up and rolling, we will put out a Forever Bedrock episode. But today, I just, I just want to play Minecraft. And I really don't want to do, like, any building, per se. We're going to do a little bit, but not a lot. But I just want to mess around with uh, turtles. We haven't ever done anything with turtles. I want to get a turtle helmet. I did breed up some tadpoles, and we actually have a ton of tadpoles now, so we can go ahead and take those to the different biomes, and we can actually make ourselves a frog light farm, as you guys can see here. We have, I think, 13? Nope, we don't even have, we have seven, but that's enough for a frog light farm. <laughs> and I also want to work on getting a dog and a cat and breeding some of those up, because over here, where we're going to put our potion room, we are actually going to build this like a tower upwards and the second floor I want it to be like the dog room and then the third floor I want it to actually be the cat sanctuary. So let's go ahead and get some of those pets. And then as you guys can see now that I've wandered over here I have been working on our trading hall. So this trading hall is going to have I think roughly 200 villagers. Uh, I know that's kind of excessive, but <laughs> I mean, you guys know from Forever Bedrock, I do everything in the excess. So what we have here is, of course, the first layer, and we have masons on this side, and I started putting farmers in on this side, so I only got three in on this side, and what I was thinking is what we could do is we're going to have two layers of masons and two layers of farmers, mostly because farmers are the best way to earn emeralds, at least in my opinion. And then over here, we have the masons, which we can buy bricks and quartz off of, which are two kind of hard blocks to acquire, and they're kind of a pain to acquire. We have piglin bartering, but gold farms on bedrock aren't the best, so it's probably better just to buy it, and then we can use the emeralds from these guys. And then, of course, we can go up here, and we'll have clerics, and they buy rotten flesh and sell bottles of enchanting and then we can have like librarians over here which buy paper and sell books and then we'll have like the fishermen and some of the ones we won't use quite as much i'm going to toss a couple fishermen in because of course we have that guardian farm out there and we did actually get you know all these lights from it so we are getting a decent amount of fish and then of course over there we're getting rotten flesh so that's why the clerics so a bunch of those trades we're not going to use a lot a lot but you know we're going to use them enough to warrant like five villagers because there's 10 per row and then over here is of course we're zombifying them to get discounts and our zombie is named jerry and that is because i was thinking jerry was a race car driver by primus <laughs> i wasn't listening to it but for some reason that's the only thing i could think of when i named that zombie so i guess we should just go ahead and get right into today's episode so down here in my ender chest if i actually remember to put the tadpoles back that was a bad move on my part uh we should have some turtle eggs somewhere i believe they're in this one uh it helps if i put the right one down yeah we have three turtle eggs so i don't know exactly how turtle mechanics work i do know they have to like lay their eggs on a beach but i think you can make the beach like a man-made beach so we're gonna try that what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna fly a little bit inland here and we're just going to build a temporary shelter. It's not going to be permanent. I'm going to grab some sand and, you know, make some water, I guess. We'll kind of make it look like their natural habitat and everything. And we'll just start hatching turtle eggs. And we'll start getting scoot, which is what you get whenever, of course, a turtle grows up. We're also going to need seagrass because I actually don't think I have any. Let's go ahead and check our storage system since I just walked in here. I believe it would be under plants and vines. And no, I do not. So I'm going to grab some seagrass and then I'll just grab some glass and stuff just to make like a real quick building. We're not going to go for aesthetics. I actually need to smelt some sand. Okay, well, I'm going to grab some supplies and then I'll meet you guys over there. All right, so I've gone ahead and picked out a location for a build. And I actually think this is just right behind the mountain from our house. There's this little hill here. It's just this perfect little hill. And I think this is going to be the spot to put it. Now, like I said, this is just going to be a temporary structure. And I'm literally just going to build a box out of cobbled deep slate and then put some sand down and then just start 
go into town with turtles. So our goal is to get enough scoot to, of course, be able to make a turtle helmet, which is five scoot. So we'll have to grow up at least five turtles. So we only have three, so we'll have to go through two rounds of breeding. And to my knowledge, turtles' eggs only hatch at night, I believe. And I don't know, like I said, if this is going to count as an area where turtles can lay eggs as a beach. But eh, we're going to find out, and at least we'll have a cool structure. All right, so here we have our amazing structure. <laughs> like I said, very, very temporary. But on a bright side, at least I did finally build out a deep slate. So... I have that going for me, but we're actually going to be incorporating that into more builds as we go. So, actually perfect timing here because night just fell. I hope torches don't affect this. Probably should look that up. But we're going to go ahead and put our eggs down. And hopefully they think this is the beach. And, well, I'm in for a long time of AFKing because these take forever to hatch. So, smart idea, guys. Turns out turtle eggs only hatch at night, so me just standing here for four or five nights, which is what my research indicates they take to hatch, we may as well go start our tadpole farm. And of course you need three different biomes to get all of the three different frog types, which we can then take into the nether, take to a basalt delta, and we're actually going to use a farm that Freb designed. I don't know where that creeper went. There's a horse. But <laughs> uh, you do need three different biomes, a cold one, a warm one, and a temperate one. And I do believe this counts as a temperate one. Uh, swamps also count. But we need to find some snow, and I think a savanna will actually work for the other type. So we're once again going to construct a makeshift shelter, grab some frogs, you know, hatch them, and then I actually grab some slime too. There's a cool cave over there. I'm getting off track. Okay. Let's go build a little shelter over there, hatch some tadpoles, and I'll grab some slime. So here we have yet another deep slate box. Of course, we're not going for looks. We're just going for use. So we have our tadpoles, and I think you can grow tadpoles faster using slime balls. We have a ton because you guys remember in our old base, we actually did have a slime chunk. So if I feed these guys, will they grow up faster? There we go. Okay, so these are white ones, which I believe was the original color. Now, I believe you have to go through like one generation or whatever to speak. So these ones here that'll hatch, they'll actually be the color we're looking for. So we'll go ahead and let these guys cool down. Hopefully these will hatch pretty quick. From my experience, they do. And also, hopefully I built these walls high enough that the frogs don't leap out. You know what? I'm actually just going to make the walls higher. Well, after a little bit, we actually have ourselves quite a few frogs down there. We have about five in these things, and we have one more tadpole. we got to grow up four more spawn. But turns out I actually put these ones in the wrong place. <laughs> these are white frogs, and we don't need white frogs because we actually have them spawning in the mangrove swamp. That's what naturally spawns there. So turns out we actually need the temperate frogs and the green frogs. Now, the temperate frogs grow literally anywhere so we can basically go make a place right next to our turtle place and the cold frogs spawn in cold places like taiga or like a snowy biome so yeah that was kind of an oversight by me but according to this we should actually get regular orange frogs just from this place and actually this will work out because i can build this at night while these eggs are hatching so I'm going to go ahead and just toss down a couple buckets of water and then we'll make this like our frog enclosure. I think that's the... What? Okay, I, th I think that's the best thing we can do. So let me go ahead and get some water in and then we'll just build up some walls again. We're not going to make this fancy again and we'll uh, start hatching some orange frogs. We got one. We got one. We got one. This is our first baby turtle. Look at him. He's so cute. I literally just walked back in this room because I was breeding up the turtle, or not the turtles, the frogs right next door. Which, by the way, yes, this is how you get orange frogs. You just saw that guy jumping past. So it says 10 seagrass will grow these guys up. Oh, they were right. And we got our first scoot. Yes. So now we just need to, of course, repeat this process, get one, at least one more. Hopefully this egg hatches tonight. But if we do that, then we can breed these. And then we almost will have enough to make a turtle helmet. Yes. It is so great when things go your way. And as night has befallen us once again, I went ahead and set up the green frog room. So this is, of course, in that snowy biome. And it's actually right where 
the ancient city is. I think the ancient city is like right over there. So we got green frogs now, we got white frogs, and we have orange frogs, which gives us all three frog types. So what I'm actually going to do is... Is that a killer rabbit? I need the holy hand grenade of Antioch. But anyways, I'm going to fly back to where, of course, our turtles are to AFK overnight so we can get those going. I'll come back here. I'm probably going to set up a nether portal for these guys because this is kind of going to be a pain to transport, you know, frogs. I think we're like 1,500 blocks out. So we'll have to do that. But let's go ahead and try and work on some turtles. Basically, after an hour and a half of waiting, enough time to make dinner, eat dinner, and do the dishes... We have finally gotten ourselves at least enough scoot to go make ourselves a turtle helmet. Which the good thing means that we can go retire this netherite helmet. Which I didn't realize how beefy this thing was. But we have a lot of enchantments on this thing. Well, hopefully I got enough levels to put all those back on the turtle helmet. So let's go make that real quick. And then we'll go ahead and we'll start Freb's farm. Of course to make frog lights. Which I have never actually even seen in person. So I believe to make the turtle helmet, all you simply do is just take the scoot and just make it in the shape of a helmet. Cool. So let's go ahead. Let's try this thing on. Boop. <laughs> I like how it covers your eyes. That's pretty cool. All right. So I guess now we have to go ahead and enchant it. So good thing we have all of these books down here if I can get out of the way of my own chest. Now, like I said, we aren't putting mending on anything anymore. There's going to be no more mending, so we're going to have to go through all these books and, of course, try and find, like, Protection 4 and, well, there's Aqua Affinity. But we're going to have to try and find all those books, and I don't know if I have them, but I guess we'll find out. There's Unbreaking 3. So I guess my question is, is can you actually enchant just a turtle helmet? Like, I don't even know. Does it actually bring... Oh, it does have enchantments. Okay, cool. So let's grab some Lapis, which I have a copious amount of. Plus three on here. We'll see uh, what enchantment we get. I didn't know you could actually enchant. Oh, Respiration 3. Good. Let's check this out. We literally just got Respiration 3. Okay, not a big deal. We can just come over here to our anvil. So I don't actually have a lot of the normal enchantments that I've put on these things. Kind of like uh, Protection 4 and all that. We have Unbreaking 3. And we also have Unbreaking... Oh, nope. Aqua Affinity. I believe I want to go with Unbreaking 3 first. Alright, so that'll make it last a little bit longer. Now, I would need protection, so I'm going to have to go ahead and take, like, the highest protection book we have. And I don't actually know. I think I did see a protection 3, so we can go ahead and toss that on. And then I don't have a respiration book, and I want to put respiration on this because even though it does give you breathing underwater, is this the one I wanted? Yeah, okay. So there's protection 3. And we can go ahead and put... Oh yeah, it already has respiration, so we can put Aqua Affinity on here. And I think that's about it. Protection. Because I don't want to put thorns on here because I'm not putting mending on this. So yeah, that would actually be our completed helmet. So we're going to have to try this bad boy out. But before we go do that, what we actually have to do is retire our first piece of equipment. Which is this netherite helmet. And I remember I told you guys we're going to retire all our equipment. So we can go ahead and put the helmet right there. And I guess while we're on the subject of retiring equipment, what I actually want to do is I want to make myself gold pants. And I know you guys are going to be like, why would you want to make yourself gold pants? Well, the first reason is because I don't have enough gold. Well, I'm actually going to have to smelt some. But uh, actually, do I have enough gold? Oh, I do. Cool. Okay, well, that kind of worked out. But um, I want to make gold pants because when we go to the nether... Obviously, you know, I don't want to be facing all the piglins and all that. So I want to go ahead and do these, of course, with regular enchantments too. And once again, I'm going to have to go through all of these <laughs> to find any books I have for anything. Okay, so I got all the books that I think we're going to need for our pants. I actually have these two protection books here, so I'm going to combine those to make protection four. And then what we can do is... I just want to see how much that costs. Okay, that's somewhat expensive. So let's toss on Unbreaking 3. And of course my anvil breaks, so we'll just move on over to this one. This is why you always have multiple anvils in the world. But we go ahead and we're going to need Protection 4, which I can go ahead and do. 
And we're going to need Swift Sneak, which I need 11 levels to get Swift Sneak. So let me go AFK a little bit at the mob farm, and we'll be at those 11 levels pretty quick. And five short seconds later, we actually have enough levels to go ahead and enchant these. And that's actually pretty cool right there. I don't know if you guys are looking at the same thing I am, but we have that whole island lit up. There's a little dark spot there on the side, but we'll go ahead and take care of that later. But we'll go enchant our pants right now. And of course, that's going to be Swift Sneak 2. And I haven't really ever fooled around with Swift Sneak. Uh, I know everybody's been talking about it because, like, you can crouch and place blocks, like, super fast. But, like I said, I've never done that. So, 11 levels, not bad. All right, so let's go ahead and take off our pants. And we'll put on new pants. So, if I crouch... Okay, that's pretty fast. And let's go ahead and... Oh, yeah, that's a big difference. Oh, yeah, that's pretty cool. That's going to be really useful for building. So I guess we can go ahead and retire our pants now. I guess we have to go like this. And then we'll go ahead and we'll probably just toss these. We'll probably start on the right side because I know we had enough room left for tools. And then, of course, all of our armor pieces too. So put our elytra there. Put our pants there. So that just means we got to get boots, which, of course, we already have made. If I could find my ender chest... It is right here, so we just have to go ahead and toss some enchantments on those, but we're going to need more levels for that. So I'm going to need some time to do that, but now we're going to head into the nether. I need to find a basalt delta. I don't exactly know where one is, and then kind of try and get the frogs there, which is going to be a giant pain. Finally, after two days of messing with this farm, I got it to work. So... The hardest part of this farm is actually just putting the frogs into the nether because they were so spread out and then I had to drag them all the way back to the nether portal and then of course build a railway system to get here. So this little project turned out to actually take quite a lot of time but the farm is working. It's just, you know, I don't know if we'll get to see in action but I did AFK it I think for like half hour, 45 minutes, something like that and we did get a decent amount of frog lights. So. You know, once these magma cubes start spawning, this farm actually takes off pretty quick. So we'll see if we can get one here. Doesn't look like any are spawning. I'll try and walk back here real quick. All right, guys, there we go. So I literally waited here for like three minutes waiting for a magma cube to spawn. So anyways, when a big magma cube like this spawns, he kind of gets stuck in these uh, powdered snow blocks and he takes damage over time and eventually he dies because right now the frogs actually can't eat him. And then, of course, those break down into these, like, smaller slimes, the medium-sized slimes. And these guys are just high enough that they take damage from the snow blocks. And then, once they come down to the smaller magma cubes, these frogs go to town. So, I do have two orange frogs, so we are getting more of the yellow. And then I have one green and one white. I didn't think the orange ones would overpower everybody like they have, but they kind of have. So this is actually designed by Freb, who is on the Forever Bedrock Realm. So if you guys want to know how to build it, you guys can go check out his video. I'll try to leave a link in the description. Now, of course, this isn't my farm, so I'm not going to build it on camera or do any of that. But yeah, go check out his video and you can watch Freb and he'll show you how to make it. It's actually a very simple farm to make. You guys can probably suss out how to make it just from looking at this. But yeah, we actually have frog lights now, and these are pretty cool. So what we'll do is we'll actually end up taking these back to home. And I do believe we are almost done with all of our tasks for the day. So let me go ahead and turn off this rail. Because even though this is chunk-based, mine carts can get lost, and I don't feel like bringing them back. So we made the turtle scoot farm. We have our scoot helmet on. We did the tadpole and frog hatchery because we now have the frog farm. Of course, frog lights. Now all we got to do is get dogs and cats. So what I want to do is, like I said in the beginning of the video, I just want to get 10 dogs and 10 cats. So I'm going to actually build a ladder to get out of here because I didn't think that far ahead. And <laughs> we're going to go see how long it can take me to get 10 dogs.
And to answer the age-old question of how long it takes to tame 10 dogs, the answer is about 15 minutes if you breed them. <laughs> so these guys are, of course, going to go over in our tower up there. So now that we have these guys, we can go ahead and breed ourselves or get ourselves some cats. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Like, I have a cat and a dog back at our original, like, hole-in-the-wall base. Well, that was actually on a different account when I made it a realm. I forgot my original login. So even though I am still K-Dog, I'm a slightly different K-Dog. But same character, so, you know, who would know? But let's go ahead and grab ourselves some cats and that should actually be a pretty easy task because not only does our villager trading hall for some reason make cats but also our villager breeder which I don't know if I showed you guys this episode but we'll take a fly on out there and there's usually two or three cats hovering around out there and I do believe I have a boat somewhere that we could take but I just need some raw fish. Now, I remember we did do some fishing. We still need to get ourselves a good fishing rod for out here. Do I have any fish? I could have sworn that we had some fish in these chests. Ooh. It actually doesn't look like we have any fish. I wonder if we have any fish upstairs. If we don't, we can always fly out to the Guardian Farm, which is, well, kind of far away from here. But, you know, if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. Do I have any fish? Now, these don't work as actual fish oh i do not it's not even in mob drops oh i ate them all oh well i'll fly out to the guardian farm and grab us a couple stacks of fish and then i'll meet you guys over at the villager trading hall okay so i lied a little bit i was going to actually meet you guys here but ow oh gosh no <laughs> but the reason I wanted to actually show you guys this is this is our guardian farm and you guys remember we constructed this back on the Xbox one right so the render distance on Xbox one is actually so low that we came from right over there that's the way we always came was straight up through here we had this little island we could see and then we had this little island here right that's new generation that's 1.19 K's and Cliffs generation so I mean, that just shows you how poor, you know, Xbox One render distance was because we are literally 200 blocks away from brand new Caves and Cliffs generation. And we built this fairly early on. I think this was maybe like 1.18 we might have built this, but yeah, that's how close we are. So we should have a decent amount of fish. We do. I'm just going to grab, I don't know, four stacks. I think that'll be enough. Shut that off. And these guys are still getting stuck in there. But I'm going to go ahead and we'll just head on back home. And I will catch you guys at the hall, I guess. Well, after a quick trip through the nether, we're going to go ahead and swoop on in here to our villager trading hall. Now, there's only occasionally cats wandering around here. They aren't as prevalent as if we actually go over to the villager breeder. So let me see here. Sometimes you get lucky and there's a cat. Sometimes you don't. Okay, well, there's currently no cats here. Let me go ahead and eat an apple, because that's healthy. We'll just go ahead and fly on over here. Now, I know it is nighttime, but I have this area pretty well lit up, because villagers do take 20 minutes to grow up. So after you breed them, you got to wait 20 minutes, and it's just it's just the whole thing. So uh, this area is fairly safe. I just kind of got to worry about drowned every now and again. But, yeah, we have a couple villagers waiting. Now, usually, if I wait around here, you'll see a cat pop up. And maybe they won't now. Oh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and sleep in one of your beds. Maybe I'll get a cat faster if we wait. Let's see here. Okay, now, usually, I see the cats wandering around back here. I don't know exactly why, like, if there's any rhyme or reason for that. But I currently do not see any cats, but I know there'll be some coming. There's going to be some cats coming. Just just give me a sec. Just trust me. Ah, there we go. See? We already got a cat. So we got this white guy here. We'll just go ahead and you gotta stand all still and quiet. And then you feed a bunch of fish, and then they're your buddy. See? Easy enough. So all I did was pretty much just walk away. So maybe I just I can't be looking at them. Maybe that's how cats spawn. Cats just magically appear when you're not looking. Maybe that's it. I don't know how cats exactly work in real life, but we'll try this process again. So, oh, I'm not looking. I'm not looking. I'm not looking. Boom. Do we see any cats? Do we see any cats? 
Ah, oh, I don't think it worked that time. Okay, well, I'm not going to wait around here for these cats to spawn. I'm actually just going to go over here, which is where we stole the villagers from in the first place. This is their homeland over here, and they completely forgot about it. All you have to do is just move 200 blocks away, and you just forget where you used to live, I guess. But there are cats in this village because there's a ton of villagers around here. So we'll try and get at least four this episode, and then I can always just take them back and breed them up because it's going to be a bit before we get to what I want to work on. Now, where are the kitties? Here, kitty, 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 kitty. There's a cow. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Here we go. We got a baby kitty. We got a baby kitty right here. No! No! Okay. Here. Shh. 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 Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Be very quiet. I'm hunting kitties. Oh, he's in the grass. Ah, oh, we got him. We got an orange cat now. So we got an orange cat and a white cat. You know what we do need? We need to get a black cat. And I do know where there is a swamp and a witch's hut. But we'll save that for another time. Am I going to be able to get one more cat before this episode goes on too long? Am I going to be able to do it? That guy was hard to see. And I'm probably also going to forget he lives in this village. And we're just going to have a cat living here forever. I need. I want one more cat. The the people want to see one more cat. Minecraft, give us one more cat. There's a chicken or a duck, depends on your interpretation. Oh, oh, he didn't like that. I need a cat. I need a cat. Oh, here we go. We got another cat. He's just on the outside of town. I think this is actually a stray. Oh, this is a gray one too. So we have white, orange, and. If I can remain still enough. There's nothing that makes you feel more like the crocodile hunter than taming cats in Minecraft. Yes! We did it. We did it. Let's see if I can grow this guy up. Oh, we did it. We did it. Let's let's get some baby kitties. Let's get some baby kitties. That gives us four. There we go. We Oh, I'm gonna grow you up too. Why? Because I can and I have the fish. I have the power, I have the fish. That is the saying. Get back here. You, you're grounded. Get over here. Okay. All right, guys. Well, that takes care of our cats. So I'm going to go ahead and actually breed those up in between episodes. So we'll have 10 to start of next episode. So if you guys made it this far in the video, I want you in the comment section down below to suggest 10 cat names and 10 dog names. You can do either or, and I'll pick the top two comments, and those will get the cat or dog names, whatever you pick. So you can permanently be in this world forever. I just need 10 names for dogs, 10 names for cats. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.